Question 16 says a block of mass, 5.3 kilograms, is pulled up a 26 degree incline, as in the figure, with a force of magnitude of 33 newtons. It says to find the acceleration of the block of if the incline is frictionless and find the acceleration of the block if the coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and incline is 0.12. So, um, actually, I run out of things to draw, so I just drew what was on, sitting on my desk. Um, so we have a a wedge, and it's got an ang a, a, an angle of we'll just call it theta, even though it tells us it's it's 26 degrees. We're going to try to do this algebraically, and our block has a force exerted this way. So we we have x1 equals f. We'll call it f1. And it tells us what that's equal, but we're just going to keep it with F1 for right now. So that's X1 equals F1. X2, so is there, we're, we're calling this the X-axis. And so is there anything else pushing up this way? The answer is no. Is there anything pushing down this way? Well, gravity happens to be hitting right there. And so um, we have, um, we, we have to calculate the angle on that. But to do that, we got to we got to put in our y-axis, which would be our normal force, but its net is zero, and then we got to we got to draw this like a right angle from the y-axis. So, um, in all actuality, our new theta is. Let me just back up a bit. Um, this this angle here is also uh, can also be represented by a right angle from this angle so as long as we make a square here um, we get the same triangle and so the angle theta can either be right here or right here so depending on how you want to do it we are trying to figure out its its movement in this direction so um, either way we're going to use the opposite over the hypotenuse and so we're, we're going to use sine theta times uh, so we're, we're going to do our, our force our, our, our force of gravity is mass times gravity so um, we're going to do that force times sine theta and that's going to equal x2 so x2 is is mass times gravity times sine theta. Now that's all the x forces that we have for the first problem but just to kind of um, looking ahead to the second problem whenever we have an x3 the x3 is going to be the friction of uh, the kinetic friction so um, right now we're going to not include this in our, in our calculation but so force F1 is going this way or x, x1, x2 is going this way, so we're going to use this, subtract it out, um, so the, the net force, let me make this a capital F, the net force equals my F1 minus mg times sine theta, and that will give me my, my net force for part one and so um, whenever I divide my force by my mass I get the acceleration so acceleration equals F1 minus mass times gravity sine theta divided by mass so that will be the acceleration for part A for part B we're going to also subtract out uh, of our net force, we're also going to subtract out the the um, kinetic friction, which um, we're going to go back here real quick. Actually, let's go to a clean page. We'll come back to that. So the the force of kinetic friction is equal to the the normal force times this um, coefficient of kinetic friction and it gives us mk but we're going to do this algebraically first so the n the normal force uh, if you go back here the normal force we said it was right here is going to be 
cosine theta, mg cosine theta. So n equals mg cosine theta. And so we can say that our, our friction force is equal to mg cosine theta times our coefficient of kinetic friction. So we also have to subtract this out of our of our net force. So net force equals F1 minus mass times gravity times sine theta minus uh, we we said it was mass times gravity cos mass times gravity cosine theta so mg cosine theta and we times that by the coefficient of kinetic friction and then we can divide all of that so if we divide all of that by m we get acceleration and so that would be your answer to number two so what is all of this this is um, the F1 it says is we can just start plugging and chugging we, we can put 33 newtons the mass is 5.3 kilograms the gravity is is 9.9.8 sine theta would be the sine of 26 degrees which is um, it's easier just to punch it into your calculator at the end of all of this other stuff but if you want to write it down it's 0.438 um, and then you can that, that's where I would round it to so all of this the, this 33 minus the 5.398 times 0.43 I'm actually 5.3 times 9.8 times 0.43 all that comes out to be equal to 10 so 10 over our mass which is 5.3 and we have an acceleration if it was frictionless we have an acceleration of of 1.9 so 1.9 meters per second squared and then um, whenever we go ahead and, and subtract off our our, our friction so right now we have approximately 10 we I rounded it down but it's it's this all sums up to about 10.23 and so when I subtract off mass times gravity so 5.3 times 9.8 cosine theta which is approximately 0. Um, 0. 0.0.898 and then times it by the coefficient of kinetic friction which they gave us is 0 0.12 you get a net force of about 4.63 and then you divide that by the mass of 5.3 kilograms and your acceleration is somewhere between 0.87 and 0.88 um, I think uh, whenever I went through this I had a 0.88 as my answer and it worked out just fine and so actually that's what I got for my answer right there and uh, so I hope that helps and just kinda if you have a few more seconds and you wanna recap you try to add up all of your X components and then if you have Y components that need to be added up for calculating N for friction then you add up uh, you add up your Y components and when you add up your y components you should they should equal zero so you're, you're only adding up your y components to solve and figure out what n is and then whenever you do that you can use n to add into your x components it, it, um, n times this coefficient of friction it becomes a, a force on the x-axis so you add that all up and that equals your force then you simply just manipulate force equals mass times acceleration and you'll find your answer